Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We would like to welcome you to our industry experts talk webinar series. My name is Ligia Chiari. I am an employment counselor mentoring coach with JVS Toronto's pre-arrival program, Canada InfoNet. And today we will have Alma Arsate from Apatex presenting the topic, how to ace the hiring process and excel at work, sharing with you tips and advice from a top Canadian employer. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping tips for the participants and a few words about JVS Toronto. Um, this webinar is being recorded. The length is approximately 45 minutes. All participants' lines will be muted there will be Q&A sessions uh, throughout the webinar, so please type your questions in the questions windows as we go. Don't wait until the end because we'll have more than one session for it. Please take time to complete post-webinar survey in the end. Email will also be sent. Uh, the recording will be posted on JVS Toronto's blog. There will be uh, two PDFs available as a handout by the end of the webinar. So on the go to webinar tab, you have an option for handouts. Uh, we'll let you know when they're there. And we are hosting from home, so please bear with us if we have any technical issues. About JVS Toronto. Uh, JVS Toronto, um, plays a vital role in Toronto and York region, ensuring that job seekers reach their potential at work, employers build the workforce they need to be successful, and students perform at their best. We have nine locations in the greater Toronto area, including downtown, North York, Markham, Scarborough, and Etobicoke. There are programs for unemployed and underemployed individuals, including job seekers who have been laid off, recent graduates, persons with disability, internationally trained professionals, youth, and etc. And during the COVID-19, we continue to support our clients province-wide with online services. Our employment experts meet with you one-on-one -on -one to determine your specific employment needs. So two programs from JVS Toronto that we would like to highlight are Employment Ontario and Canada InfoNet. Employment Ontario includes job search, job matching, job development, resumes, LinkedIn, career exploration, financial employment support, and more. Uh, we help you clarify career interests, skills and opportunities, build confidence at job interviews, attract job offers from employers. So if you are already in Canada, in the province of Ontario, this program is uh, good for you. And Canada InfoNet Employment Acceleration and Mentorship is a pre-arrival program for internationally trained individuals relocating to Canada within the next 12 months with an approved Canadian immigrant visa. We help you with in-depth job search preparation, online mentoring, achieving success in the Canadian workplace, and employer connections. I'm happy to introduce our presenter today, Alma Arsate. Welcome, Alma. I will let you take on and continue to tell us a little more about your story. I will mute myself from now on and I'll come back at the question sections. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ligia. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. So good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on the area of the world where you're calling from. Um, my name is Alma and uh, yeah, I will be spending the next uh, hour with you. So Ligia, next slide. Okay, so if you want to take a screenshot of this agenda, I'll suggest that because it's going to give you an idea of when are we having some Q&A time. I try to build the presentation in a way that is not just me talking all the time and you guys waiting until, you know, the very end to ask your questions. I wanted to make sure that we have an interactive um, kind of conversation. So we're going to be covering a, a few things here. So one, and I do get a lot of questions uh, on LinkedIn about supply chain pathways. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about my career within the supply chain and what kind of jobs are, you know, within that supply chain space. Then I'm going to be talking about the integration into the Canadian workplace and a little bit of my story on you know, how I got here and uh, some of the challenges I had to overcome. Then we're going to pause for more Q&A time. Uh, getting an opportunity to interview, I get this question you know, again a lot. You know, how do I break into the job market? So I'm going to give you some tips and some advice, and uh, then we're going to break again for Q&A time. And then just, uh, you know, in closing, you know, the kind of questions that you're going to be asked at the interview. I'm being a people manager for many years, and I'm going to share some of my um, questions that I have asked in real life uh, interviews with you guys. So, and then how do you keep your job once you get one, right? So the, the half the battle is to get a job. The other half is to keep it, you know, which some people might have a challenge with. And then we're going to close with more Q&A time. OK, so again, as Ligia was mentioning, as we go along, by all means, feel free to type your question on the chat box because Ligia will be picking up some questions from there. Right. So let's get started. Next slide. OK, so let's start with supply chain pathways. Um, next slide. It's something that, uh, you know, in terms of my professional background, we're going to talk about some industries, you know, like I've been working for multiple industries throughout my life, right? Newspaper industry, this is how I started. Then I moved to the electronics. Then after that, automotive. Then I went into medical devices and diagnostics. Um, and all of those four, the first four industries were in Mexico. And then now in Canada, you know, when I moved to Canada, I moved to consumer packaged goods. We're gonna get into that in a minute. And then now I'm in the generic pharmaceutical industry. So something that you see here is that, you know, the skills that I have acquired throughout my career are pretty transferable. It doesn't really mean that you have to get married to a specific industry, right? You basically can port some of your skills across multiple industries, okay? Next slide, Lydia. So these are some of the roles I have had, you know, within my career. And, and funny enough, not that I plan it this way, but half of them, kind of half of them are, I had in Mexico and half of them in Canada. So the ones I had in Mexico, as you can see here, you can get, start getting an idea. I started in finance, then I was an EA. I went into procurement, customer service. I was a planner, I was a scheduler. I was working on ERP implementations, supply chain planning. When I moved to Canada, and we're going to go into that in, in more detail, you know, I moved as a project manager. Then I, I was working on portfolio, trade customization, which is basically when you go to the store and you see these uh, displays, let's say at the end of the aisle, that's what is called trade customization. You know, these very specific displays, uh, product displayers. Um, then, you know, um, um, again, supply chain execution, systems and data and supply planning. So all of this is to give you sort of an idea, right, on what kind of, um, uh, you know, careers or jobs are available within the supply chain. And on the next slide, my key takeaway of this is when before, I want to say 20, 30 years ago, you will see a very linear career path and progression. That's not what we're looking for right now. What we're looking is a lattice pathway, you know, an example that's a more varied path for growth and development because we want our leaders to be very well um, versed, you know, in multiple areas of the supply chain. That's what enables you to, let's say, go up the chain, go up the ladder, right? Like that is really going to help you, you know. So try to look into possibilities of a branching out, you know, to other, um, uh, you know, areas of. Uh, this example is related to supply chain, but within your professions there might be other jobs that you might want to give it a try right just to get a broader foundation okay so yeah next slide and this is our first part like you know for before we pause for q a just want to highlight there's um canadian professional associations that you can join if you're already in canada or even to be honest before you get into canada where you can actually network with other supply chain management professionals right I'm part of the three associations, so I cannot tell you which one is better than the other. You have to find out for yourself. But uh, as Ligia pointed out, this presentation and this uh, an, an additional resource that 
um, I was able to get from Supply Chain Canada will be dropping to you, you know, um, at the, towards the end of the presentation. So don't worry about making notes and stuff. You're going to get a copy of it. Okay. So on the next slide, it will be, I guess, our first pause for um, Q&A. So Lydia, fire away. Hello. So let's take a look at the questions we have here specific to supply chain, right? Um, someone asked, what are some of the industry specific skills required to find an opportunity in the field of supply chain? So that's a good question, but as I think as I mentioned already, um, the skills that you acquire within supply chain, you know, like being resilient and uh, kind of prepared, prepared for a bit of the unexpected, you know, sense of urgency. And we're going to go into a lot of the skills like in the later uh, part of the presentation. So maybe I'll, I'll defer to that part of the presentation, but um, they're very portable. You know, you will be able to port your skills across multiple industries. So it's not necessarily industry related, actually. Um, I have had to learn in every industry I've been, you know, I have had to learn and maybe even relearn some of the skill sets I had, you know, but the four, core fundamental base of your skill set is definitely portable, transferable mm -hmm. skills. Sure. Okay. Thank what else? you, Alma. We do have another specific, I know you were going to talk more about your uh, path, but someone's asking, do you need to have a specific degree required to start in supply chain, even as an entry level candidate? No, I have actually hired people with engineering degrees, commerce degrees, um, bachelor in business, um, all kinds of degrees. Actually, I think I, once I hire a physiotherapist, someone with a physiotherapy degree, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, you know, like the, your degree is your degree. For me, it's more important that do you have the skill, the aptitude, the attitude, the potential. Are you doing something to get yourself acquainted with the supply chain? Are you part of these organizations that I just mentioned? Are you pursuing a certification in the field? Like what kind of leadership are you demonstrating within the supply chain? Right. I really don't care too much about your degree in particular, you know, but so no. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't consider that any degree has, uh, you know, uh, if you don't have a particular degree, you won't be able to enter the supply chain. That's really not the case. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Alma. Uh, should we go with uh, one more for sure. this section? OK, By so way. another one about uh, supply chain. People who do not have prior supply chain management experience could also look at this department as a career choice? If so, what sort of opportunities could one explore? So if they do not have the experience. Yeah, well, that's always the toughest, um, you know, it's always tough to break in, right? In whatever, you know, career profession you wanna pursue, but it's not impossible because all of us that are in the supply chain started somewhere, right? And mm -hmm. how we started and where we started was probably more like entry level jobs, right? So although there, those might be a possibility, you know, like if, if you don't mind potentially taking a step back in your career to re-enter into the supply chain in a more entry level profession, professional role, there's many, many roles that are um, available that require, you know, basic general skills that could give you an entry path into the supply chain. Now, if you have zero supply chain experience and you want to be, let's say, the global director of supply planning, that will be a stretch, right? So this <laughs> is where you might need to tone down your expectations, right? And say, okay, I do want to enter into the supply chain. I have transferable skills. How can I get closer to the decision makers? How can I get closer to these hiring managers? And a great way to do it, again, is to network with supply chain professionals, right? And get, get yourself known. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alma. Uh, can we do more? one last one on this topic well, or move on? Let's, let's, no, let's do, okay. it, let's do it. We have a little bit so, of time. So, still on supply chain, um, we got the question, would you suggest newcomers who have years of management experience in the logistics and supply chain management field to apply for the same level of management positions in Canada? Yes, absolutely, 100% yes. We need you, we need all of your skills, and we need you to be working at, you know, uh, at the, let's say, proficiency level you were working before. 
Now, having having said that, you know, is it going to be, you know, walk in the park? Well, maybe not, but most definitely you should not um, considering uh, consider like, you know, starting your job search three levels down, you know, that I wouldn't recommend it. You know, if you feel you have adequate experience, I have hired people, you know, with with all international experience, you know, I, it, at a manager level. I really, you know, if you if you demonstrate the experience and the skills that I'm looking for, I really, you know, I, I, I will be personally pretty much willing to give you a chance, right? So I, I will say yes, you can you can apply at that level. And more and more, I have to be honest, more and more, I have run into experiences of people where they they have actually landed jobs within their you know comparable level that they have back home. So I think I think in the Canadian society that feared Canadian experience you know, requirement that we people used to have many years ago, that is also morphing, you know, so by all means, go for it. Thank you, Alma. So I think we should move on. And then we do have a lot of interesting questions coming up, mm -hmm. but we'll have I'm more opportunities. Forward. I'm looking forward right? to answer more questions. So, <laughs> okay, so let's move so. on to the next section then. Okay, I'm going to mute myself again. Thank you. And the next section, we're going to talk a little bit about the integration into the Canadian workplace. So next slide. Um, and, and, you know, this is a bit of my personal background and we're not going to spend too much time on it, but, you know, just in case you might consider it interesting, you know, I was born, st raised, studied, worked and married um, in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Me Mexico. So this is where I live for most of my life with the little arrows, you know, as you see, we're lucky uh, or I don't know if we can call it lucky, you know, but we're, we're across the border with the U.S., you know, so I, um, I was able to, um, you know, live in Juarez that actually you know had the opportunity to work with multinational companies that were based out of my hometown now as you probably heard you know because this is we're pretty infamous you know around the world the situation in my home country deteriorated right now it's not that it's great but you know back then it was you know actually pretty bad too so next slide um and and just more like um about my immigration story you know again not to go into the details you're gonna get a copy of the presentation but just to, so you get an idea you know that it, it 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 was a process that back then it took kind of a long time you know so and then i just want to highlight that i was constantly monitoring job openings within my company that i that i was working for back in mexico and in canada overall right so this is where i Finally, you know, a year later after I got my permanent residency, even um, uh, even from Mexico, you know, I, I was able to identify a job opening, you know, um, and I had to take um, a little bit of a step back, you know, uh, um, you know, when I, I accepted that job offer as a project manager, although I was already um, a people manager in Mexico, I said, well, you know what, for me, the most important thing is to, um, you know, land into Canada as soon as possible. And that was the opportunity that was available at the time. No regret, you know, things have worked well for me, I will say. And um, a little bit of kind of what happened after, right, in terms of Canadian citizenship and, you know, other jobs that I have taken. So just in case you, you know, you might be curious, you can read it later. Moving on to the next slide. How, do you, how did I integrate into the Canadian workplace? And we're going to talk about the challenges I had and, you know, how, do, uh, how did I kind of over, overcame the challenges? So the first challenge I had, I didn't know the Canadian culture that well, you know, so that was kind of my challenge and, you know, a bit of like the way, you know, I was able to um, overcome. Um, Lydia, next uh, click, you know, it's kind of more related to taking cues from my peers. You know, I was quite observant, right? You know, it's like, oh, you know, like I should not just barge into the door, you know, of my boss's office without politely, you know, standing outside until I was acknowledged, you know, and I was waved in that I could come in, you know, and when before I was just kind of barging, not, not so much, right? So I, I had to, you know, take cues from my peers, my managers. Um, I got some feedback too that I was like, well, maybe you, you might be more effective if, um, you know, you do this instead of that. So, you know, as especially as embarrassing as it may be, you know, I was able to, you know, be open to that feedback. Something that you're going to hear a lot is the small talk. You know, the small talk is, um, and maybe because of my culture, we were kind of used to small talk. 
But here, you know, the first, let's say, five minutes of the meeting is not about the meeting. You know, it's about like, how is, how's your day? How was your weekend? And your son had this graduation. And, you know, it was more related to that, right? So it, it, the small talk is big here in Canada. So you, you just need to understand that it's more like a way to connect with your peers, with your boss, with your direct report. And it shows that you care about them right and actually you do care about them so it's, it's not even a sacrifice but it's more like something you have to do and then i was more more open about myself you know something that i was very private i was very reserved i didn't want to talk a lot about myself but with this small talk i was able to like open up a little more so people get to know me right so um and my next challenge um was I had to learn to better express my ideas to influence others, you know? And I wasn't that great at it, to be honest, when I started. So some things that I did, you know, uh, was I listened to a lot of audiobooks, you know? Um, and, and, and that, believe it or not, that really helped me because, you know, I acquire more vocabulary, number one, right? And, uh, and then I observe and learn how to other present their, their ideas and summarize effectively. So sometimes, and I actually, you know, spoke about this in the, um, uh, you know, Women of Inspiration Canadian Immigrant Magazine. I was interviewed uh, in April and uh, I mentioned how, you know, I saw some of my peers kind of taking uh, my idea and repackage it and sell it, you know. So and I was like, but that was my idea, you know, like and then someone else took it from me and he was able to do a better job than I did. And, and they were like, oh, great, Brian's idea. And I was like, mm, but I, it was my idea. So anyway, so instead of like, the, like I have to realize I was a little frustrated, but instead of letting that frustration kind of simmer and then it's like, well, I'm not gonna give an idea anymore. I was like, hmm, I need to observe and learn how he presented the, my idea and how he summarized it more effectively so I can do it too, right? And you know, this is kind of what I've been doing for the last few years. Um, my next challenge on the integration was related because um, people didn't know me, right? So the the lack of faith in my abilities, you know, they didn't know what I was capable of, right? So like that's normal. Oh, when you come here, they're not gonna know you. Like over there, you have an established career. Over here, no one knows who you are. So um, um, the, what, what I did, you know, to overcome the challenge is, is I said yes to every difficult project I was assigned to. You know, and I had to, not something I'm proud of, but I had to even get back early from my math leave, which, you know, was something that, you know, I, I personally, uh, you know, decided to do because in Mexico, you only get like three months of math leave. Here you get a year, but no, back then it was a year, now it's a long time. But uh, but I had to get back early, you know, and, I, and that, that really helped me because, you know, I, I was able to get back into a project I wanted to participate in. And then just work really hard, you know. I ensure I consistently deliver results for the company, you know, and that kind of improve uh, management uh, uh, faith and my abilities. The next one was, you know, gaining the support of my coworkers. And what I did was like, you know, getting to know them, right? Have lunch with them, offer my help, trying to build strong relationships because guess what? I was gonna need their support, right? And the last one that I want to talk about, I was used to a more hierarchical formal workplace in Mexico. You don't say no to your boss, especially not in front of everyone else. You know, you don't challenge your boss, right? Here, you know, um, the, the next, the next uh, one is very, Canada is very democratic and very inclusive, right? So I was not used to talk to my boss's boss's boss and address him as Steve, right? But it's like they're they don't like it when you're too formal you know like sierra madam no that's really not 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 the way not the way to go right and then you know like i just wanted to make sure that you know all team members were heard employees were expected to be proactive and engaged right so so they actually welcome the challenge i welcome the challenge you know even at my team meetings right it's like okay what else do you have you know are you sure we're on the same page right and you know bring any ideas and you know any challenges as, as long as you do it respectfully and constructively you should be okay okay so next one q a time off we go thank you alma 
So I'm going to jump right in uh, with our next question. Uh, regarding the management consulting job market in the supply chain and operations domain, request if you can shed some light on the kind of relevant opportunities available. Um, that's kind of specific, you know, and a bit outside of my area of uh, expertise because I'm not a consultant. I work in supply chain full time, but I'm engaged with consultants a lot of times, right, that they have supported um, my company to implement systems and processes. So I will say that at this point, you know, with the challenges of the COVID or so, it might be, um, I guess, more, more challenging to maybe secure clients. Not to say that it's not possible. Right now we're engaged with a huge consulting firm because we're upgrading our, our planning, you know, systems. So even, it, even from working from home, we're still implement, going ahead and implementing systems. You know, the company still requires all of our efforts. So. You know, that would be probably a good question, you know, to ask someone in consulting, you know, and, and maybe establish those connections through LinkedIn, right? And maybe explore a little bit more of that, that consulting market. Sure, thank you. Um, another one, many of our clients, they are still not in Canada yet, right? So this question comes, uh, what are the chances of getting an interview from your home country before landing? Not impossible, you know, I will say, especially now, you know, where we are forced to use technology, you know, to do interviews. So I will say not impossible. I will say that you do need to have all your paperwork ready. So, you know, so you already have your permanent residency, you know, and so that will be, I guess, the first question, you know, um, that the companies prefer local candidates or candidates that have already landed. I'm going to say yes to that. You know, that's kind of the reality, but it's not impossible. I would not discourage you from applying. Just be very clear on your application that you are already legally authorized to work in Canada. You know, that can make a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I hired someone, you know, he was from India and uh, he applied, you know, and, and he already had, he actually sent me a note to say, I'm going to have applied. I have a permanent residency, right? And, and I'm really interested in this job. He fit the bill, you know, so we interviewed him over Skype maybe three years ago and I hired him sight and scene, you know, so the first day he showed up for work is the first day I met him in person. So it's not impossible, you know, but it's kind of difficult. Sure. But, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So should we move on to the next no session? Yes. Okay. Let's move All on right. to the next section and hopefully that will save us some time at the end for even more questions. Yes. Okay. So getting an opportunity to interview, you know, that's again, something that is, is a bit of a hot topic, right? How do I break into the market? Next slide. Okay, so there are a set of skills and I, I, I decided to drop this pictorial because I really like it, you know, and you guys, again, get to keep it, you know, but some of the skills in high demand that I will say I'm highlighting and I did touch on them briefly, you know, not to say that these skills are specifically related to supply chain is pretty much any job i will say requires good communication skills resiliency critical thinking problem solving being part of a team self-motivation emotional intelligence and decision making you know again you can read all the other skills there but that's kind of some of the skills that are in high demand next slide now what examples do we have in terms of just job posting requirements. And you're gonna find these again and again, where companies and hiring managers like myself are looking for individuals or leaders that can get things done. You know, we don't, uh, not necessarily like, uh, you know, promises that, yeah, we'll get it done, eventually we'll get it done, maybe next month, maybe, maybe the following month. Uh, no. We want people that have a track record of getting things done. People that have excellent communication skills, comfortable with uncertainty, right? Evolving and moving goals, especially again within the supply chain, but basically anywhere. You know, influencing skills, resiliency, presentation, facilitation, analysis, report, dashboard, scorecard, analytical, time management, any system experience that you might have, any designations that you might have. This is just some examples of, you know, some actual job postings. 
and some requirements that might be out there in the market. Next slide. How do you get an opportunity to interview? Uh, this is where my tips come in, and I'm gonna share with you my own to-do list, you know, to maximize your chances of success, okay? So the first one is, you need to be so confident and feel so confident on your professional abilities and experience. Going back to the question I was asked, I was a manager already, should I apply to the same level? Da, da. Uh, yes, you need to completely believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself and you appear very tentative, um, you know, that's not gonna be good for you, okay? So believe that you can, right? Believe in yourself, you need to be your own, I would say the biggest cheerleader um, of you should be you. Next one. Yes, so this one is an important one because believe it or not, you know, I have gotten resumes with grammatical errors and typos and not a lot of substance, I will say. So don't focus just on what you were doing, um, but also focus on quantifiable accomplishments. And what I'm talking about quantifiable accomplishments, I want to know what you actually did for your past companies. And I want to know, I want to know numbers, I want to know percentages. If you don't have them, approximate, right? Like no one is going to go and knock at your door or your past employer said, did so and so reduce, you know, the um, slow moving and obsolete inventory by 35% or 34%? No one is going to be asking those questions. I mean, don't, don't, please don't lie on your resume. But what I'm saying is, if, if you don't have specific numbers, try to approximate the reduction or the improvement that you did. But please quantify, okay? Uh, the next one is related to a strong online presence. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn, and I'm going to bet, uh, you know, out of the uh, 100 people that are on this, uh, on this workshop, I'm connected with a few of you. Because LinkedIn is really are very much the professional, number one professional networking site. You have to develop your network of contacts, right? You have to uh, also use um, online platform to learn about professional events where you can network, right? Uh, please have a complete profile and because we need to be able to find you, right? If we need you. So you're not going to be found that you're not visible, okay? So next one. Find yourself a mentor. Yes, don't be shy. Ask for help, right? Even if nine out of ten people say no to you, uh, maybe one will say yes, right? So that's what we're talking about in management consulting. Expand your network. Find yourself someone within your own, you know, uh, domain or profession, and that person will be potentially, you know, willing to help out. Okay. If not that person in particular, maybe that person can direct you to another resource you know or a website or uh, give you some advice okay uh, next one yes this one is very important right there's no really room, there's no room for defensiveness you know people want you to succeed people want you to do well someone like gvs toronto or other organizations that are there to support you please embrace their feedback and be willing to change. You know, don't be so, you know, I will say, you know, sticking to your old ways, right? Sometimes it's good to have, like, there's some room for improvement, you know, and as painful as it might be, please, by all means, be accepting and try to change, okay? Uh, the next one. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, so if there's an area of improvement that is holding you back, for example, your communication skills, you need to tackle it with passion, right? And, and focus on improving just a little each and every day, you know? And I can assure you, maybe you won't notice, but people notice, you know? So when you really, like, let's say you, you were struggling with uh, presentation skills and you joined Toastmasters, you know, maybe at the beginning you won't see a lot of improvement, but over time, you know, you will get there, okay? Next one. Right, so this one 
it's just you know like um as I, as I was you know suggesting by all means you know go go for that if you are um, already a manager go for the manager job that's really nothing wrong with it but don't discard opportunities because they're not at the same level you know because at the end of the day you know like as i was mentioning with my own career where i had to take a step back from being a people leader to a uh, tech professional again you need to trust going back to point number one you know you need to trust that your abilities your skills hard work perseverance will get you back into the right track okay next one now when you get an opportunity to interview um be very concise and be very sharp and be very concrete on how you answer those questions right and please by all means find where these um interview is taking place and if it's going to be a face-to-face -face, which right now it seems like it, it won't you know but let's say if it's a virtual interview please log in five minutes before you know don't try don't don't be logging in you know what i mean late late it doesn't make a good first impression you know so try to log in before try to appear you know like come as sharp and very concrete you know and so dig a little deeper into the star you know there's a lot of google resources that you can find on that and I think the last one were related to attend local networking events, now virtual events, you know, but still be willing to reach out to people you don't know. You know, you can you can meet individuals from other industries or their backgrounds. And you know, the more allies you have out there trying to help you out and knowing that you're looking for a job, the more um, you know, those loose connections, you know, might help you land one. Okay. Okay. And more QA time. Thank you, Alma. Um, so we have a couple of questions that I will combine into one because they're all about volunteering, right? So people are asking if you recommend volunteering, where to find the best opportunity, and now with uh, COVID, if you think there would be online opportunities so people who are not yet in Canada can also get some experience. So can you share a little bit about uh, volunteering and that as Canadian experience? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so yes, there's plenty of opportunities and resources on how to volunteer uh, virtually. Um, and again, um, maybe I should pause to just mention a lot of these resources are easily searchable online, you know, so as, as you know, showing that initiative, right, and actually you searching, Googling, you know, these resources that goes a long way you know but there's definitely um many opportunities to volunteer i'm volunteering with actually a volunteer right now i'm volunteering my time to uh, to support gbs uh, toronto and their their clients so yes i would say that there's always many opportunities to um to uh support uh, and actually acquire some practical experience uh, i'm also supporting or volunteering with supply chain canada and uh, we have what we call volunteer regional ambassadors, you know, so every region in Ontario got a, a one or two ambassadors and they're the ones organizing the event on behalf of the association. So what a great opportunity to put that on your resume, right? So definitely you can still volunteer. We're gonna do a lot of virtual events this year. So you're not, you're a supply chain professional and you didn't know about supply chain Canada, you by all means we go to the website and, and subscribe to their newsletter because a lot of these events are gonna be virtual, so you can attend from where you are. Okay, so no excuses there. Okay. Sure. Thank you, and thank you for volunteering your time with us today. Yeah, it really, it's really my pleasure. Uh, one other question is in regards to Apotex. So how to sign my interest in Apotex? I've applied by the website, but no response yet. But I think this applies to other employers as well, right? Right, right. I mean, there's a few things you can do, you know, if you feel strongly that you're really a very good candidate and you match, um, you know, the requirements of the job, like, to be honest, you have to also be very, uh, I would say, self-aware and make sure that you do match the the requirements of the job but let's pretend that you do match the requirements of the job and you haven't gotten any any phone calls or so you know let's say you're and um, applying for the supply chain space you know so you can actually go to linkedin and find apotex and find supply chain 
and see who works in supplies in our apotheques and potentially connecting with some of them and ask, you know what, I, 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 I get those kind of messages all the time. You know, well, I applied for this role and I, what I do, and, and I haven't got, uh, gotten a call back. So what I do is I go to this individual profile. I kind of take a quick glance. It's like, mm -hmm, this individual actually does look like, you know, could be a potential fit. So I said, well, send me your resume and I'll forward it to the hiring manager on your behalf now. Don't expect every single person to be willing to do that. You know, I do it, I guess, because I want to do it, but you know, not everyone is going to do it. But let's say out of the 10 individuals, maybe one will do it, you know, so maybe that will be an opportunity to get your resume highlighted. Thank you. So let's continue and we'll have one more question uh, question and answer section in the end, right? Yes, and then we'll, we can take, a, you know, many questions, uh, yes. you know, at that time, you know, after we finish our, our last um, section. Okay. Okay, so moving on to our last section, we're in the home stretch here. So <laughs> what kind of questions am I going to be asked at the interview? Okay, so this is, a, a, again, a, something I get all the time. So one of the most important interview questions that I see and I have actually asked this question many times, you know, is what single project or task would you consider to be, let's say, one of the most significant accomplishments in your career so far? So it's very powerful, you know? So imagine, imagine you're the candidate in front of me and I just ask you this question. Are you ready? Do you have an accomplishment ready now packaged on a star format, as I was mentioning, right? And let's pretend that you do. But then, you know, next next click, I guess, Lydia. I can actually take it anywhere I want. You know, after you after you gave me your answer, I can ask you, okay, give me a detailed overview or uh, walk me through the plan and how you manage it or tell me how you manage and influence others or how you change and grow as a person based on the, based on this experience so as you can see you know that single question can take you and the interviewer into many different directions right so this is why it's so important that you prepare for the interview i know it might sound like a bit of like a rehearse i don't mind if it sounds a bit rehearsed but you have to feel comfortable with the answers that you're going to be providing you know at the interview right so you have to prepare meaning i will suggest what i always suggest is to have i will say um four or five um multi multi-purpose examples i call it multi-purpose because once you develop it depending on what the interviewer is asking you you can actually do a bit of a spin-off on your answer to highlight what the interviewer wants you to highlight, right? So for example, if my, my um, you know, uh, let's say one of those multipurpose examples is ABC, right? And, and the interviewer is asking me to highlight my collaboration skills, I can take my ABC example and actually put the spotlight on collaboration skills. You know what I mean? So that's, that's where you can actually use these examples to highlight depending on the question, you know, the, the highlighting that particular, um, uh, you know, skills that the interviewer is looking for. But you have to prepare for the interview. There's no ifs or buts, prepare, okay? Next one. I'm gonna leave you with, these are a lot of the common interview questions that I have personally asked, you know, my candidates throughout the many years I've been in um, hiring, uh, you know, managers or tech professionals or supervisors or, Etc. So consider them a bonus because these are real life <laughs> interview questions that a Canadian employer has actually asked. I'm not going to go through it, but uh, as you're getting a copy, you know, just go through it and try to prepare, right? Develop, develop an answer for these questions. Okay. Next one. Now you got the job. Congratulations. You know, now what? So. <laughs> Canadian employ employers, and uh, to, to be fair, I almost venture any employer, expect their employees to maintain a professional performance that consistently meets or exceeds job standards. And I just listed a few, you know, I would say leadership competencies that, you know, I personally value in my team members, right? But they're pretty universal, 
right? So I'm just going to highlight a couple. You know, so for example, you know, possesses a high sense of urgency, no procrastination. And uh, believe me when I say it, um, I come from Mexico, you know, the land of tomorrow, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah I'll take care of that tomorrow. No, uh, no, no. Canada is more like, you said you were going to take care of something tomorrow, you have to either deliver it tomorrow or be proactive in your communication and said, my apologies, I have these other three competing, competing priorities that you also asked for. So is that okay if I deliver what I promised the day after tomorrow? Or do you want me to juggle the priorities and maybe this can pass and then I can deliver what I committed to tomorrow? So all this to say you have to be proactive on the communication and actually deliver when you say you were going to deliver. Otherwise, there's problems. Um, treats people with respect and dignity. And this one, you know, I have to say that when, uh, you know, back home, there might be some joking around and reading and this and that. Uh, here, you know, you have to be really aware, you know, self-aware and make sure you don't offend other people, you know, in, I mean, inadvertently, but like, Try to be as respectful as possible with you know, your peers and co-workers in order to maintain a healthy relationship. Um, maintaining a positive can-do attitude. That's something that is so valuable because you know, it's kind of linked to the next one, persist in the face of obstacles or challenges because, again, we want someone that perseveres. We want people that are not going to give up at the, same, at the first sight of a challenge, right? So we want people that can overcome those challenges, and that are very perseverant, okay? And I will say the last one is uh, very, very important. That's what I highlighted and bolded it and underlined it because, you know, results are, you know, very, very key, right? We want, uh, we manage, let's say, at, at your level, let's say a professional level, we manage, most of the companies manage by objectives. So you have your objectives that are set at the beginning of the fiscal year, and then you're going to be asked to uh, to deliver it okay so yeah so that's kind of how to keep a job once you get one okay so next one and we almost got to a close but um, we have some q a time and there's some closing remarks so Lydia hit me with more questions <laughs> Thank you again, Alma. And I just wanted to remind everyone who is attending that JVS Toronto has uh, many programs to help you with uh, the job search, including online mentoring through Canada InfoNet for those of you who are outside of Canada, and uh, also in-person mentoring for those of you who have arrived in Canada. So Alma, you have mentioned how getting a mentor is important. So please reach out to your employment specialist about that if you are a client or register with us if you are not yet a participant, right? So let's jump into the questions. Um, one of them is, how can a job seeker demonstrate having strong soft skills in a job interview, like collaboration, team spirit, et cetera? It's all about examples, right? What kind of examples? And goes back to preparing for the interview. So I will, I will say that you have to develop examples that highlight those soft skills. Because to your point, those are extremely important, right? So you might want to develop, you know, an example going back in your career when you did X, Y, or Z. You know, you want to develop that example so that value of collaboration or perseverance or whatever that is comes across very strongly, right? So again, preparation, preparation before the interview is key. Okay. Um, another question. Sometimes we have read that companies give the reason for rejecting the candidate that you don't have Canadian experience, but an immigrant will not have Canadian experience. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, that's an interesting question because um, I have never given that reason as, uh, for rejection in 13 years I've been in Canada. I have not received it and I have never given that um, rejection reason, so I cannot speak for, by like my own personal experience, again, because I have never used a reason. And to your point, I would never expect to use a reason because 
I'm understanding that if the individual, you know, is uh, new to Canada, that individual will have Canadian experience. It's kind of logical. So mm, for me, this really, maybe there might be some companies that do it. You know, I have not seen my companies, Johnson & Johnson formerly or Apotex use that. So mm -hmm. that's good yeah. to hear because it's actually uh, not allowed in Canada, right? To uh, no. discriminate someone it's like that. So it shouldn't be a reason. We know that it's important yeah. to have Canadian experience, but that should not be a reason to be rejected. Yeah, so and it's, it's not a match now know. because again, otherwise we wouldn't open the open the doors to all of the talent that is around the world if we were all ex expecting as employers that all of you have Canadian experience. That's really ridiculous, right? So mm -hmm. it's not not and not even legal. So let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So we have a full example here for, from someone who had an interview already. So they're asking, what can I do to ease my stress? And the situation is, I had a good interview last Monday. I think I did great face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, but one of the last questions, I feel like it killed me. I am a doctor who has been serving as a sales manager and director and doing it well as team leader in medical devices. The interviewers asked me if... I would consider going back to medicine or deciding to dedicate myself full time with them. I hesitated, but I think in the end I told them I would think of doing um uh, I would think of doing it because I have found it to be a fulfilling job too. It's been a week and a half and no answer, no reply to the thank you email. <laughs> And then the person's asking if they have any chances. So they're they're feeling uncertain about the whole interview situation. Do you have any advices on that? Well, you know, this is more of a generic advice, but you know, I try to not stress too much about things that are outside my control, you know. So if you are really your best and your interview, you know, and I know there's a lot hanging on it. Yeah, but let me give you an example. When I when I applied for my job in Canada, I was back in again back at Johnson and Johnson in Mexico, and um, I had my interview, you know, a uh, um, virtual interview with J and J Canada. Um, my husband was very anxious and very stressed about their hearing back from you know the office in Canada. I honestly was not, you know, because I said, I already gave my best, you know, if they want me to be part of the company, if they want to hire me, that's great. That's amazing. Um, there's really nothing else I can do at this point. It's in their hands, right? So um, I'm just kind of moved on with my life. And I said, if I don't hear back from them in the next number of weeks, then I'm going to continue to search. And actually, to be honest, I never stopped searching. So I would say focus on what you can control because you know being anxious and stressful especially in the middle of a pandemic is not really healthy that's very great advice alma thank you um one last question uh, specifically about the pharmaceutical industry would you say that some of the techniques or most important techniques to research and explore job opportunities in pharmaceutical industries such as Apotex, do you feel like there's something different about job search in general that applies to this industry? No, I think all of the advice that I have given you is high level enough to say Connect and get involved with professional associations of your, you know, that um, oversee your profession, you know, so that's step number one, you know, you want to be connected with the people that have jobs, you know, and the people that are working in industries that you want to work in, right? So that's step number one. Step number two, I already mentioned, you know, be a visible active presence on LinkedIn and invite people to connect if people don't want to necessarily connect with people they don't know you know, at least follow them. You know, LinkedIn has this wonderful feature of follow, you know, so you go into more, my profile and not, not invite, I mean, I invite you to go into my profile, but not, not, that was not the point. But I mean, in my profile, I have a follow button there, you know, so I might, because my number of connections is getting pretty high, so I cannot accept all the connections, but you can always follow me, you know, and then you get notifications about like I actually just shared a few weeks ago that we're we're hiring, we're having a hiring bleak, and we're hiring about a hundred new 
you know, uh, uh, technicians and the manufacturing packaging space and some trade skilled personnel. And because as you can imagine in the middle of the pandemic, you know, the pharmaceutical, um, you know, uh, demand um, is uh, skyrocketing. So yeah, uh, I think that's something that, some things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Alma. Um, we do have a lot of interesting questions. So I ask our attendees, if your question was not answered, please email us at webinar at jvstoronto.org and we will try to get a response from you, Alma, if that's okay, and maybe post as a blog post uh, so we can explore all these sure. questions. Does it sound no good? No problem. So, it will be my, it will be my pleasure because I know I know time is limited and I to be honest I try to make it as interactive as possible. But I understand with a hundred people on the line, I won't be able to get to all of your uh, questions. But again, as Ligia said, we can take them offline and maybe Ligia and I will work together to create a blog uh, post to answer most of the questions. But I encourage you to go through the information. I know I went through it kind of quickly, but you know, uh, feel free to, that's what I, I, I was mentioning to Lydia. I don't mind making this presentation available to you because, you know, then you can read it kind of at your own pace, you know, and um, and the other presentation that Lydia is also going to make available from Supply Chain Canada. It's a wonderful presentation that actually shows the steps that you have to take to get acquainted with the organization, you know, so I'm hoping that you'll find it useful. Yes, and um, I'm having a little bit of a technical issue with uploading uh, the documents as a handout. So we'll send it with our follow-up email. Um, if mm -hmm. if the participants have any questions about it, they can also reach out to their employment specialist. So don't, just wanted to uh, make that clear. Or also at the, the email that I mentioned, webinar at jvstorano.org. And I will move on because I know you have one last slide before we finish, right, Alma? Yes. So, yeah, so maybe more like some closing remarks. And I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the iceberg illusion, you know. And um, I, I really like this pictorial because, you know, there's things that people can see, you know, so the top of the iceberg, you know, that's a success. And people are like, oh, you know what, like, oh. She has done really well and then she, you know, whatever she made it, whatever, quote unquote made it. So, but what people can see, you know, is the persistence, the failures, the sacrifices, all the disappointments, all the hard work, all the dedication that, that someone like you and someone like me, you know, had to put into in order to achieve that, we'll say, quote unquote success, right? So, and the next one, Ligia. It's more related to, I just want to leave you with this, right? In terms of people thinking success, it's a million perfect decisions and a bit of luck. But no, I, I really don't think so. You know, success, most of the success is a combination of failures and having the ability to bounce back, you know, learning from those lessons and then continue with your perseverance and continue to work really hard, right? And as I said, you need to believe in yourself. You need to keep going, you know, Trust that eventually you will get your head above water, right? You got this and you need to believe that you got this, right? Because the future is in your own hands, right? I get it. You know, yes, the employers also, of course, have a huge say on it. But if you show up at that interview and you can showcase yourself with, and, and, and we can see all the things that you bring to the table, right? You're also, also landing that job will grow exponentially. And I wish, I just want to wish you, all of you guys and gals, the best of luck, you know, in your plans to arrive to Canada. Canada has been really good to me and my, my family. I have basically zero complaints. You know, I'm very happy that I'm here. You know, my, my children, 21, 15, and 12, are thriving. You know, my husband of 22 years, you know, we, we have been together for a long time, you know, and, and we have, we have a mass of family here and, and a new group of friends and a new new routines. Do we miss, you know, our family back home? Absolutely, 100%. And before the pandemic, we tried to make it every so often to see them. But, you know, again, going back to sacrifices, right? It's hard to have it all. So, and actually, it's probably impossible. But anyway, so just leave you to that. With that, you know, you got this. You know, we're waiting for you <laughs> to arrive with all your skills. And we're hoping to see you soon. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Alma. It was a great webinar. I'm sure our participants uh, enjoyed it as well. Uh, thank you for your time and all of the great advice and tips you shared with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.